Bayarmasukians had skulls specialized for a carnivorous diet, with their large canines and enlarged jaw muscles. There are various theories relating to snout sensitivity in non-mammal therapsids, members of the group may have had whiskers, given that they share maxillary features with mammals like specific snout foramen. Similar features are present in reptiles, so it is not a certainty, though it is likely given their relation to mammals. Paleontologist Robert Backer theorized that therapsids were endothermic, citing evidence that the Permian climate was often cold and therapsids would have needed the advantage to be so prolific during this time. Herpetoskylax did not possess nasal turbinals, a trait associated with endothermy in extant mammals and birds, as this character has only been confirmed in more derived therapsids. Biarmasuchus was a medium-sized predator, similar in size to a large dog, grew up to 1.5 meters to 2 meters in length with a skull length 15 centimeters to 20 centimeters it was a lightly built, probably agile animal that would have fed on smaller tetrapods. Their legs are quite long, and the animals were probably quite agile in spite of their size. A large opening for the eye and a small temple opening common in primitive stem mammals, this lends to a weak bite but how it ate is pure speculation. The teeth contained eight small incisors on the palate, followed by a canine tooth and a further five canine teeth. So together the species contained 14 upper teeth and 12 lower teeth of small size. Eotitanosuchus was primitive in that, though it was a predator, the temple opening behind the eye was small, giving it a weak bite. The temple was, however, larger at the top than in other Biarmasuchians. Its fossils were found in the Perm region of Russia. Eotitanosuchus was without doubt a dominant animal of its environment. Found preserved in flood deposits containing many skeletons of estaminosuchids, it has been suggested that this large predator was an excellent swimmer, possibly semi-aquatic or frequenting marshy ground. This, however, is just speculation. Lemurosaurus is a genus of extinct Biarmasuchian therapsids from the late Permian of South Africa. It is easily identifiable by its prominent eye crests and large eyes. The name Lemurosaurus pricei was coined by paleontologist Robert Broom in 1949, based on a single small crushed skull, measured at approximately 86 mm in length, found on the Dorsfontein farm in Grafrionet. To date, only two skulls of the Lemurosaurus have been discovered, so body size is unknown. The second larger, more intact, skull was found in 1974 by a team from the National Museum, Bloemfontein. Bernicia's skull is adorned with numerous bony projections and ridges, giving it a highly ornamented appearance. These features likely served for species recognition, sexual display, or both. As a member of the Biarmasuchian therapsids, it provides crucial insights into the early evolutionary stages of therapsids, the group that eventually gave rise to mammals. The elaborate cranial ornamentation of Bernicia suggests it had a complex social behavior, possibly involving visual displays to attract mates or deter rivals. It is part of a broader adaptive radiation of therapsids during the Permian period, showcasing the diversification of predatory and herbivorous niches before the rise of dinosaurs. Ivantosaurus is based on a very fragmentary skull, consisting of two partial maxillae and a quadrate. The specimen was discovered in the Perm region of the Okursky district, Russia. Fossils from the region date to the Upper Kazanian substage of the Upper Permian, making it one of the latest therapsids known. It was carnivorous and may have grown to a length of 6 meters it would have been the largest carnivorous therapsid known, exceeding in size even the largest late Wordian to early Capitanian antiosaurs. Antiosaurus was one of the largest predators of its time, with some estimates suggesting it could grow up to 5 to 6 meters in length. This size made it a dominant predator in its ecosystem. Its skull is massive and heavily built, with thick bones and prominent ridges. 
This robust construction suggests it had a powerful bite, capable of taking down large prey. It had large, conical teeth well suited for gripping and tearing flesh. Its dentition indicates it was a hypercarnivore, primarily feeding on other large vertebrates. As a member of the Dinocephalian therapsids, Antiosaurus represents an important stage in the evolution of therapsids, the group that eventually led to mammals. It helps bridge the gap between more primitive pelicosaurs and more derived therapsids. It had a distinctive cranial morphology, including a high, domed skull and thickened bones, which might have been used for headbutting or other forms of intraspecific combat. The limbs and girdles of Antiosaurus were stout and powerful, suggesting it was built for strength rather than speed. This morphology indicates it could overpower large prey with brute force. Despite its large size, it had a relatively small brain. However, studies suggest it had well-developed sensory capabilities, particularly in its olfactory and auditory systems, aiding in hunting and environmental awareness. The ontogenetic series of the genus Sinophonius is incomplete, with a gap in size range between juvenile skulls and the only known adult skull. Despite this, the series reveals significant morphological changes from juveniles to adults. Juvenile skulls are relatively tall and narrow without pachyostosis, while adult skulls are wider and lower with pachyostosis around the orbits. The medial ridge on the skull roof becomes more pronounced and extends further in adults. The nostrils and orbits change little in size, but the temporal fenestri increase significantly, indicating a more developed mandibular adductor musculature in adults for stronger bites. These differences suggest that juvenile and adult Sinophonius occupied distinct ecological niches, a pattern also observed in the South African genus Antiosaurus. An adult skull would have reached 80 centimeters with a heavy long snout. The long tail and short limbs show the species to be a primitive therapsid, unlike Inostrancevia, which was more advanced. The structure of the limbs and the density of the bone are designed for a sprawling stance. The temporal opening is more advanced than Estemenosuchidae, but less advanced than Inostrancevia. The teeth are large with 12 large palate incisors followed by two canines and various smaller back teeth. The lower palate is the same as the upper but without the canine teeth. The appearance of Titanophonius is reminiscent to the sphenicodontid pelicosaurs, which included Dimetrodon. The Dinocephalians were a diverse group that were found across Pangaea during the middle of the Permian period. Many of them had thickened skulls that may have been used for head-butting each other, and some also developed bony horn-like projections around their faces. Estemenosuchus was particularly elaborately ornamented, earning it a name meaning wondrous crowned crocodile. It had two big antler-like structures on its head, two wide cheek flanges, and a small nose horn, almost looking like the synapsid version of a ceratopsid dinosaur, and with its big bulky body, fairly erect-legged posture, and herbivorous or omnivorous diet it may have been a fairly close ecological equivalent to them, too. But it's also possible it was semi-aquatic, and it certainly does have a very hippo-like appearance when reconstructed with a decent amount of soft tissue. The Tapinocephalidae were one of the first earliest groups of herbivores as seen by their talon and heel-like dentition. The enamel on the heel of the dentition for many tapinocephalid specimens has signs of reduced deposition indicating the grinding action of consuming plant material. Due to the smaller body size of Styracocephalus, it likely consumed smaller vegetative plants. Based on dinocephalian dentition, the presence of a large, heavy cranium and a poorly attached fragile mandible makes it difficult for this species to consume tough vegetation on dry ground. One proposed purpose of horns on dinocephalians is to adapt to a less individualized behavioral pattern. With cranial ornaments especially, horns, that are often used for head-butting, this species demonstrates a more social and group-like behavior. 
Researchers suggest the forelimb posture of Tapinocanonus to be intermediate between sprawling and an upright posture. It is suggested that they are more upright standing than sphenocodonts, but more sprawled than theriodont theraspids. Their intermediate posture is can be explained by their long bones, in addition to the shape and positioning of the humerus and medially inflected femur. This postural stance would also be more supportive of the Tapinocanonus larger body size. Heterodont dentition indicates that the teeth are morphologically differentiated by shape. In Tapinocanonus, this includes incisors, canines, and post-canines, all of which have different shapes which allows for a variety of functions. Tapinocanonus was likely an herbivore or a carnivore. Struthiocephalus, a dinocephalian synapsid from the late Permian of South Africa, living around 265 million years ago. About 3 meters long, it's known from a fairly large number of fossils that represent different ages and sexes, with what seem to be the males possessing thick bony protrusions between their eyes that may have been used for flank budding. It's been interpreted as semi-aquatic, with a long wide duck-shaped skull that might have been adapted for feeding on soft marshy vegetation. The bone texture around the nostrils also seems to show support for a fleshy valve-like nose that could close off underwater. It was a large animal, reaching 300 kilograms in body mass. Cryocephalosaurus were large terrestrial herbivores, measuring 4 to 5 meters in length with barrel-shaped bodies. They had short snouts and large thick skulls, characteristic of tapinocephalids, with specialized dentition for herbivory. Their pronounced, round pachyostosed skulls were anteroventrally rotated and inclined backwards, with a posteriorly located brain case. Its skulls featured high dorsal septums, small interorbital regions, and anteriorly positioned orbits. The pachyostosis caused a widening of the intertemporal region and reduction of the temporal fossa to a short, wide slit. These modifications suggest Cryocephalosaurus may have engaged in head-butting behaviors. Although no teeth have been recovered, it likely had polyphyodont homodont dentition, with specialized teeth for herbivory. The teeth featured thick dentine walls, wavy enamel caps, and dentine-exposed heel surfaces. Evidence suggests they had a permanent gomphosis attachment style, allowing for precise tooth occlusion during frequent tooth replacement. Only several partial skeletons and skulls have been found. The skull bones are extremely dense, about 10 cm at its thickest. This thickening is possibly related to head-butting behavior, as some researchers suggest. The species is considered a herbivore, but because the mandible is heavily constructed some paleontologists consider it a carnivore, with the species being able to use muscle power to cut prey up with its incisors. Ulamosaurus is a large moschops-like form from Russia, it is probably similar enough to be included as a separate species of moschops. Despite its advanced characteristics, it lived slightly before the Karoo forms, showing that the moschopines, and indeed the Tapinocephalidae in general, had already attained their acme by early Capitanian time. Moschops were robust dinocephalian synapsids, measuring 3 meters in length and weighing between 130 kg and 330 kg they had small heads with broad orbits and short, heavily built necks, typical of the Tapinocephalidae family. Their skulls featured a tiny opening for the pineal organ, a broad and deep occiput, and a narrower dorsal border. The pterygoid arches and angular region of the jaw supported powerful jaw muscles, indicating a herbivorous diet that included tough vegetation like cycad stems. Due to nutrient-poor food, they likely had to feed for extended periods. Their anatomy allowed them to open their elbow joints widely, enabling a more mammal-like posture that facilitated movement and feeding, as well as short bursts of speed. It has also been suggested that most chops may have been semi-aquatic. Their thick skulls led to speculation about head-butting behavior, which was confirmed by a 2017 study using synchrotron scanning that revealed adaptations in the central nervous system for combative behavior. These stocky, 
barrel-bodied animals were characterized by a massive bony skull roof and short weak snout. Tapanocephalus is thought that, like other tapanocephalians, they engaged in intraspecific head-butting, possibly to compete for territory or mates. In life, they were over 3 meters in length and massed around 2 tons, making them among the largest animals of their time. Tapanocephalus is known from a number of skulls and postcranial bones. The skull is large with a heavily pachyostotic skull roof, a massive bony frontal and a short weak muschops like snout. The overall length was 3.5 meters or more, the skull about 55 centimeters long. The skull is nearly twice as long as wide, and the snout is elongated and provided with sharp incisors and large canines. The cheek teeth were small. The body is robustly built, and the limbs stout. Junkyria cannot be distinguished from its relative Titanosuchus on cranial grounds, but only in limb length, Junkyria having short and squat limbs, and Titanosuchus long ones. Evidence of femoral osteomyelitis has been described in a fossilized specimen of J. parva. The authors attributed the cause of the pathology, characterized by bony spicules growing perpendicular to non-pathological fibrolamellar bone tissue, to a bacterial infection resulting from an attack by a predator, as evidenced by puncture marks on the femur.